I occupied the position of Seattle civic poet, which um, is a title I quite love because in other cities, this title is called the Poet Laureate. And here in Seattle, the city decided that we were going to have something called the civic poet. And I think that says a lot about what the city is trying to do and what the arts community here in Seattle is uh, trying to achieve. And actually, the poem that I will read tonight is very much a collaboration um, in, in many different ways with different uh, people coming together from, from different environments. Um, so the poem I will read is part of a four-part series it is a response to a symphonic work uh, that was written by Charles Ives, who's an American composer who lived in New England. And the Seattle Symphony asked me to write a poetic response to this, uh, to this uh, symphonic work, which has four movements. And at the same time, they asked four different agencies who um, provide services for homeless uh, folks and folks who need transitional housing and permanent housing as well to um, work on a visual response to the work. And we came together and met each other and I went to work on the four poems. This took um, some time to do. And it was from the beginning very important to me to work on this poem um, not so much as my own response to the music, but I wanted to include the folks who were painting and responding visually to the work. I wanted their voices and their opinions to come into the poem. And I also wanted Charles Ives himself. Uh, he left some notes around each of the movements. I really wanted to have a multiplicity of voices. Uh, this is a, a, you know, an American composer, and what does that mean to me? That was a central question. What does it mean to be an American? And that's something I struggle with the poems as I wrote them, and it's something that we all engage with, those of us who were uh, responding artistically to the poem. So you will hear in the poem Emma Lazarus, who wrote The New Colossus, which is the poem that stands at the foot of the Statue of Liberty. Um, Catherine Lee Bates from America the Beautiful, you'll hear lines from that, and as well as a speech from uh, Mark Twain. Uh, he made a speech on the 4th of July, 1886 in Iowa, and there's also a few words in the poem that come from the art making um, sessions that we had when we heard this particular piece. Um, so it was very important that there be a multiplicity of voices for me um, because this, this was about dealing and grappling with this idea of what, is it, what does it mean to be an American. Um, so the poem is titled Summer Sparks. In New York, a colossal woman raises a burning torch, a promise to harbor the tired, the poor, the homeless, the tempest-tossed. In Seattle, another woman fades, homeless in a park, with the racing butterfly of her child's heart, her only compass. A pendulum swings all over the land, from the luscious forest of generous imaginations to the ruinous bigotry that clipped Emmett Till's wings. Echoes of yesteryear's ghost dance of a wounded knee, that sideways shuffle call for ancestors' aid, beats time before us again and again. Fruit plump on summer's light in a New England veil ripens alongside Southwestern's border bruised and battered fruit. Fourth of July fireworks bravado, the feeling of losing yourself in the jubilee of the crowd after winning, collapses under the crushing evidence of the country that we've never been. The sparks lighting up the sky, then falling, folding back into night, are they a celebration? The best part of summer? Or more of a weeping? Love and pain don't strike some of our others with different strength. We are equally susceptible to kindness and to cold and board together the destiny of our shared country. On an occasion like this, from sea to shining sea is a good place to begin, not end. Thank you so much.